Ishikawa Gomen was something of a legendary figure in Japanese history. One of his most notable exploits was the stealing of gold from rich nobles, which he would then distribute to the poor. In a sense, you could say that this guy was indeed the Japanese Robin Hood. He was said to have been born sometime around 1558, but the historical information about Ishikawa Gomen can be a little sketchy, making him seem at times to be more like a folk hero than anything else. There's credible evidence to prove that the man did indeed exist however, as in Toyotomi Hideyoshi's biography, written in 1642, he mentions Gomen, though in a less than flattering light, referring to him as a mere thief. It's also suggested that Gomen once tried to assassinate Oda Nobunaga, the first unifier of Japan. This can't necessarily be proved, but it does seem like something Gomen would wind up doing, considering he was said to have tried to assassinate Toyotomi Hideyoshi, which would lead to his death. There are many accounts of Gomen's life, however. One instance states that he was born as Sanada Kurenoshin in 1558 to a family of samurai serving the Miyoshi clan in the Iga province. But when his father was killed by members of the Ashikaga shogunate, the 15 year old Sanada would swear revenge. In some tales, his mother was also murdered by the Ashikaga shogunate during a struggle, where Sanada would have a Bruce Wayne moment and watch his parents die. But revenge wasn't something he could just go and take as a 15 year old orphan, so he began training in the secret ninja art of ninjutsu under a master named Momochi Sandayu the man who would begin the ninjutsu school in the Iga province. Momochi would adopt him and begin to raise him as his own. During the harsh ninjutsu training though, Sanada would find himself drawn to Momochi's wife and before long, one thing led to another. Outraged by the revelation, Momochi would banish Sanada from his home and would be forced to flee from his master's temper. Although, to make matters worse, he would steal Momochi's legendary sword before leaving. In another version of this tale, Sanada steals gold from Momochi and also takes his wife with him when he fled. However, it should also be noted that Sanada had a violent temper and a terrible attitude in general. It's likely because of this that he would become impatient with Momochi's wife in the first place, who he would eventually murder, for she was, in his words, slowing him down. This is quite a stark contrast to the man who would be stealing from the rich to give to the poor, as surely someone so selfish could not be so charitable. This leads me to a second version of Ishikawa Gomen or Sanada Kuronoshin's life. In this version, Ishikawa Gomen was named Gorokuzu and was from the Kawachi province and therefore not a runaway ninja at all. Gorokuzu would move to the Kansai region and would form a band of thieves and bandits where he would adopt the name Ishikawa Gomen. It's here he would establish an operation to rob the rich feudal lords, merchants, clerics, samurai and just about anyone with something worth having. It's said that he would give his takings to the poor. The thefts were said to be mostly conducted at night, for during the day, they would pretend to be merchants and infiltrate social groups and businesses to find things worth stealing. Gowen and his bandits would also scatter a lot of their loot amongst civilians so as to throw the authorities off their scent or to cause confusion in order to vindicate themselves of thievery. This is a very important part of Ishikawa Gowen's legend as it challenges the idea as to whether he was a charitable Robin Hood type hero, giving riches to the poor, or merely a sneaky trickster who was using the poor as a scapegoat. It wouldn't be until the Edo period that Gomen's antics were romanticised, thus making him into a pious hero even though that may not have been the case at all. One of the most interesting accounts about Gomen is in the way that he died. It's said that he was brought to the main gate of the Buddhist temple in Nanzenji in Kyoto, where he would be punished for his crimes of robbery and attempted assassinations. But like most things from Japanese history, there are some conflicting accounts. In the first instance, Gomen was said to have tried to have killed Toyotomi Hideyoshi because his wife had been killed in one of Hideyoshi's bloody conquests. Gomen blamed Hideyoshi for the death of his wife and so snuck into Fushimi Castle, the home of Hideyoshi, and entered his room. However, he made a large blunder and knocked a bell off a shelf, which caught the attention of the guards. Gomen was quickly captured and sentenced to death. Though his death would not be the quick beheading that we're used to seeing, no. He would be publicly boiled alive in an iron cauldron along with his toddler son, though he was able to save his son by holding him up high above his head, whereby his son was rescued by onlookers. This form of punishment is a pretty extreme and harsh way to kill someone, 
and not all like the regular punishments that we're used to seeing, like being beheaded, getting burned alive, being hung by the neck, or trying to get monetized on YouTube. In another version, Gomen would again be caught entering Hideyoshi's room, only this time by a supposedly magical incense burner that would alert the guards to the presence of intruders. In typical Hideyoshi fashion, he had Gomen's entire family boiled alive with him. In the final version, Gomen would try to save his son from the heat of the cauldron by holding him high above his head, as he did in the first instance. However, he would then suddenly plunge him deep into the bottom of the cauldron, killing him instantly so as to save him from the pain. He would then hold the body of the boy high above his head, in defiance of the Hideyoshi regime, until he eventually sunk to the bottom of the pot himself. When facing Hideyoshi during his death, he was apparently said to have confessed that indeed he was a thief, and that he had stolen a fortune. However, he would also accuse Hideyoshi of being a thief as well, for in Gomen's words, Hideyoshi had stolen Japan. Before he died however, Gomen penned a famous poem, which states that regardless of how the world turns out, there will always be thieves. A tombstone is dedicated to him in the Daiyunin Temple in Kyoto. In fact, large iron bathtubs in Japan are now called Gomenboro, meaning Gomen Bath, after the legendary thief himself. But what did you think of Ishikawa Gomen? Was he a regular moral hero who was aiding the poor? Or was he a bit of a scoundrel, using the poor to maintain his facade as a merchant and to facilitate his getaways? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. More Japanese history is coming in the next video, in the form of the only female ninja ever recorded in history. Until the next time guys.